Now, in physics, I might have some expressions that contain more independent variables than just one. So, for example, the area of a triangle is equal to a half base times height. Base and height are both variables in this equation, as is the area. Uh, but the base and the height are not dependent upon each other, but the area is dependent on both the base and the height. Uh, the ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT, uh, that uh, pressure could be said to be equal to uh, a combination of the other variables in the expression. So what if we wanted to find the derivative of these expressions? Well, we'd be able to do so by partially deriving them and finding um, the partial uh, differentials of um, these formula. So imagine, for example, that z was uh, a function that's related to the two independent variables x and y. Well, we would be able to look at uh, how z changed with respect to x by simply looking at the difference between where we are on this function at uh, one point and where we are at a new point. So this new point would give us uh, x plus a small increment of x and y minus the original point on this function with respect to the two quantities. Now, of course, we can pursue this further and see what happens as we take this to zero of uh, z in x by the x. And this, of course, gives us something that looks very familiar to us, uh, but is modified in one small way. It is all of this with respect to dx. So you can see that if we are trying to see how z changes with respect to x, but we're not interested in how z changes with respect to y, we've only partially uh, differentiated this function. You can see that what we would have to do is we would have to derive um, this with respect to x as if y was just a constant in the formula and almost ignore it and not apply any rules of differentiation to that variable y, but apply all the usual rules to the variable x. Now, say for instance I had a triangle ABC, it was a right angle triangle ABC, then the magnitude C would equal the square root of uh, A squared plus B squared, Pythagoras' theorem, right? Well, I'm going to just write it out just slightly differently, just to make the differentiation slightly simpler for myself, is to the power of a half. Okay? Now, what would happen if I were to differentiate this function with respect to either of the variables within this function? Well, I were to do uh, dc with respect to dA, and therefore, I would then apply the usual rules of differentiation as if this was the square root of a squared. So therefore, it would be a, a squared plus b squared to the minus a half. Differentiated uh, just the a term and left the b as if it was just a constant. I could also find the partial derivative of c with respect to the other variable in this formula. And this would give me b a squared plus b squared to the power of minus a half. And so you can see partial differentiation is a way of uh, finding the derivatives of functions that contain more than one variable. So you can see in that example that there are actually two partial derivatives of that function. Now, if we were to derive it again, it would again present us with now more options. We could do a, take a high order derivative, say we can differentiate it again a second time, but we could differentiate uh, with respect to b on the first differentiation and then differentiate with respect to a on the second. Or we could differentiate with respect to a both times, or we could differentiate with respect to b both times or we could do it the other way around and then do A and then B. And so it actually gives four possibilities, all of which are second-order partial derivatives for the function. 
So if we imagine um, there was a function, uh, for example, z, and uh, z was dependent on x and y, and we differentiate it with respect to x, then, of course, uh, that would uh, just be z by dx. But then if we further differentiate it with respect to x, so we're now finding the second order derivative, and then this would be the quite straightforward example of d squared z by dx squared. But now, for example, imagine that the, we decided to differentiate partially with respect to y instead, but then on the second order, we were still differentiating with respect to x. And that would throw up a slightly different derivative. It would be with respect to uh, the increment of both. And then, of course, we could uh, again have dx here, and we could have uh, dy here. So we first differentiate with respect to x, and then second, we differentiate with respect to y, uh, and then this creates similar, but just the order is reversed. But of course, that doesn't mean anything, because we, it's independent of the order. And then finally, uh, we could differentiate with respect to y and have this one differentiated with respect to y. And this would create d squared z by d, dy squared. And so you can see that these two are in fact the same and these two are different and it basically means that there are two ways of producing one of these and there is also two other possibilities with only one way that they could be produced. Through our notation of f primes and such we would just have to be careful and we would describe it as fxx showing that the first order derivative for example was a differentiation with respect to two x's like this one here, uh, the second was fxy or fyx, or indeed fyy. And so now we have all the machinery that we need to later on uh, look at partial uh, differential equations. For now, we're going to stop talking about differentiation because what we now need to look at is integration.